in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Bible says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. And if you do this, there will be life to those who find it and health to their flesh. It says, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches. It says, I honor them that love me. Doth not wisdom cry. Tonight, wisdom is crying again. Wisdom is asking you, do you want your life to be the way it has always been? Wisdom is crying. It said, I was there when the earth was founded. This is in the book of Proverbs. I was there. I, I have a track record of the weakness of mankind. And if you trust me, I will deliver you. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Oh, I found my way out of the wickedness of this life. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, when you buy a product, there is something that is written on the product when you pick water or anything. They write something best before. Have you seen that? Best before means if you want to maximize the opportunity and the blessing that this product has, use it. Take advantage of this time period. Hallelujah. That means any moment after the given time period, it will either not work to your satisfaction or you will pay a greater price. Hallelujah. Pat Robertson, many of you know him, the founder of CBN. In the days of his youth, he prayed three prayer points. He said, oh God, I'm but a young man and you have given me such a great assignment. I pray that you give me three things. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the spirit. He said, if you can give me these three things, send me. We neglect wisdom so much. We neglect wisdom so much. And then we run around chasing for the things that only wisdom can give. We waste our time in things that are minors things that will come to us naturally if we invest in wisdom one more time pray and say lord i choose wisdom i use my mouth and i use my life i am tired of foolish decisions i'm tired of the level that i am and from the depths of my heart i covet the wisdom of the spirit not human wisdom not intellectual wisdom that comes to naught i crave i cry i express desperation for that wisdom that made kings out of ordinary men 
that wisdom that made champions out of shepherds that wisdom that made warriors out of weak women I covet your wisdom I covet your wisdom it is life to me I covet your wisdom I express it as a matter of life and death by me kings reign and princes decree justice not by strength by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor they that seek me early find me hallelujah lord as a family of faith we submit our desperation before you we need wisdom we need wisdom distinguish us through wisdom oh god we need wisdom we crave for it thank you for the things that you have done in us and through us at this level but oh god we cry for wisdom in the name of the lord jesus grant us wisdom tonight in jesus name god bless you please greet one another hallelujah again we'll never cease to honor and appreciate great men and women of god in this place please let's celebrate prof thank you sir for taking out the time celebrate pastor williams in a long time hallelujah Please celebrate Shadi's husband, Mr. Ojele, his wonderful wife. Thank you, sir. And Pastor Pete Rock's wife is here, my friend and brother. Celebrate him and celebrate her. You will be somebody's wife, ladies. Celebrate her. Thank you. Hallelujah. Everybody say wisdom is the principal thing. Say one more time. Say it one more time. That means when you get wisdom, it will make you a principality. Oh, I love the wisdom of God. See, brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Look up. Look up. If you pay the price, you see, wisdom is so powerful. You don't need to give somebody to keep it for you and then you collect it. It's not subject to the wickedness of another person. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to warm it. Huh? You don't need to save it in a bank. It has equal value in every nation. Hallelujah. You don't need to keep it in a safe and then be afraid if a thief will come and pick it. When you have it, you have gotten it. It's as simple as that. There are things, see, the apostle said, such as I have. A man can know that he has something. It's not guesswork. You can know that you have something. Hallelujah. And I have come to cherish the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God will make you do things that will cause men to wonder. They said, what wisdom is this? May that be someone's testimony. That a generation will look at you and say, what wisdom is this? I cannot believe that with the kind of background you had. Or with the kind of past you had. You are still surpassing standards. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Tonight, please, even if you've never paid attention in anything that I've been teaching, this is one of the nights where I believe God will alter someone's destiny radically. Hallelujah. Radically. What you do not know can destroy you. Are you listening to me? What you do not know brothers and sisters in this realm ignorance is not an excuse what you do not know can destroy you thank you Jesus father we thank you help us 
salute your excellency. You have come to make us like you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are taking on the subject of extraordinary success tonight. The Lord put this so strong in my heart. I'm so excited because this is one of those days that you will walk out of this place rejoicing, knowing that your life has become predictable. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm like a bee. My life is a product of many, many anointings. I have glean from the wisdom of many men. My father called me some years ago and he said, you're a young man with gray hair. Wisdom can add to your status in life. Wisdom can make a boy called Joash at age eight to become the king of an entire nation. Wisdom can make a feeble person called David to defeat a roaring enemy called Goliath. I cherish the wisdom of God. I cherish the wisdom of the Spirit. Sometimes when I sit down, I just begin to weep and I salute the Spirit of God for the ministry of all the men and the women of God who have poured in and invested in my life. Some of them may never know the impact that they have made in my life. But I am so grateful. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit in your work on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit in your work on earth. The Holy Spirit has moved through great and mighty men and women and has opened them to different dimensions of grace in the kingdom. And we remain indebted. Hallelujah. This teaching tonight is very dear to my heart. And I hope that we will receive it and may it change us in the name of Jesus. 
the first thing I want to talk about tonight is just to challenge us on our responsibilities as far as success is concerned. The topic is extraordinary success. As far as being successful in life is concerned, please listen to me. You have a role to play. Everyone say, I have a role to play. When it comes to the success equation, I want you to know that God has a part to play. But you also have a part to play. Please get this. It is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. We have two extremes in the body of Christ when it comes to the issue of success. There are others who believe success is purely based on intellectualism and hard work and all of that and they neglect the place of God to their detriment and they find out that they never become successful and then there are others especially those who are spiritual and they love God and they believe that because they are spiritual and they love God and they experience his presence success should just occur automatically both people are in error there is an imbalance are you getting my point when it comes to the kingdom you have a role to play and god has a role to play it is your playing of your role and god playing his role that makes your success extraordinary that makes your success guaranteed praise the lord it's important for you to know this I always say this when I'm teaching on success that it is dangerous and oftentimes destructive to try to share truth with people when they do not see the need to receive it. Are you getting my point? It is very dangerous. Listen, let me tell you something. When God started out with me, I was so excited at the depths of truth and insight that God was giving me. And I made a big mistake and I don't want you to make that mistake. And the mistake that I made was that I assumed everybody had my kind of passion. Are you getting my point? So every revelation God shared with me, I was just looking for just every and anybody to share it with. And I saw the way that certain revelations came to me as precious pearls. And I carried it and gave people and they dropped it on the floor and matched it. They trivialized the depth of the dealings with the spirit never waste your time trying to give information to people who have not seen the need to receive it please get this god is giving us wisdom tonight hallelujah that's why the bible says they that seek me will find me you must communicate your desire and your desperation for god it says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart is a law in the spirit never waste your time trying to invest your time your energy your resources in people who have not communicated a desire to receive it and don't feel guilty about it there are many parents who spend money trying to pay the school fees of people who are just not interested have you seen people like that you pay money for lesson and you come and find the person just gisting around or playing computer games do not waste your time and your resources on people. Make sure you probe the sincerity of their willingness to receive. Is someone learning something this night? I used to feel so guilty because I felt if God gives you something, you should lavishly give it. And you know, I became an enemy to many people because I was forcing them to try to get these principles. And I just found out that some people are just not interested are you getting my point so learn it tonight treasure the informations that you receive from the spirit treasure your sacrifices don't trivialize your sacrifices you may pick up this message right now as a gift and give someone and the person tells you please i'm busy i'm expecting a call somewhere he's expecting a call that will lead him to make a foolish decision whereas there is wisdom that will save him 
are, are you getting what I'm saying? You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Very important. You have a role to play and God has a part to play. That's what many of our fathers of faith call covenant. I like to use the word partnership for it. That it takes you. Please never forget this. Never forget this. Your success is not all up to God and it's not all up to you. You have a part to play and God has a part to play. And as far as God is concerned, he is more than faithful. You can trust him to play his part. That means the, the, the problem in the equation of success is not trying to coerce God to play his own part. It's to make sure that we understand what our roles and responsibilities are. Are you getting my point? I promised that I was going to touch on something two weeks ago. Let me just touch on it very briefly. The gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. There is a difference. They are both gospels. But I need you to understand something. The gospel of salvation is the gospel that reveals to you the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. It lets you know that Christ came and he paid with his blood as an atonement for your sins. And that if by faith you accept the free gift, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the shedding of his blood, his death and his resurrection, that if by faith you open up your heart, at once eternal life becomes yours as a gift. Are you getting my point now? So under the gospel of salvation, you do not do anything. Any man that tries to tell you that you do things in order to inherit salvation or to receive eternal life, that's not true. The Bible says we are saved by grace and that not of works. Hallelujah. Lest any man should boast. But then the problem is many people camp around the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation is only an entrance. It should open you up to other realities in the kingdom. Are you getting my point now? And then you come into the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom reveals Jesus as king not savior again and it reveals you not just as a child but as an ambassador it is the gospel of the kingdom that opens you up not just to your rights and privileges but to your responsibilities hallelujah the gospel of the kingdom helps you to understand that God did not just save you to sit down moving around and every time there's trouble you just say jesus you died for me i belong to you if you like don't save me and then we don't do anything so we throw all of the responsibility to jesus christ and we just say just sit down and enjoy yourself and let life work for you unfortunately that's not true it sounds so true brothers and sisters it sounds so spiritual but it's not the truth it's not an accurate interpretation of the thoughts of god there is the gospel of the kingdom. And in the gospel of the kingdom, God finds a man. God empowers that man. And God begins to reveal to that man that he, God, has a need. That we were saved unto good works. We were not saved by works, but we were saved unto good works. Not unto laziness. So you understand that there is a responsibility in the kingdom. Hallelujah. It's very important for us to understand this when it comes to success it depends on you hallelujah so let's look at the concept of success very quickly um, by the way let me celebrate two people um, you have the photos media hallelujah I must 
appreciate these two great men of God. They have shaped and molded my life. I salute and I honor them in their absence or in their presence. I'm not embarrassed. They have mentored and built me. They have imparted wisdom. I cried for wisdom. They are true apostles of wisdom. Lots of people make noise, but see, wisdom has fruits. Are you getting my point? Anyone can claim to be wise, but there are fruits of wisdom. And I honor these great servants of God. The first of them is Bishop David Oyedeko. I honor him in my life. I salute him as an apostle of wisdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. I honor him. And I appreciate God for the depth of wisdom and the depth of insight. Different people say all kinds of nonsense. Wherever I sit down and I hear you say anything wrong against him, I will get up and walk out of there. I don't care who you are and what you are saying. I don't care what your thoughts are and what your perspectives are. I salute these great men of God. Koinonia, help me. Let's celebrate grace. 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 Hallelujah. I also celebrate a true apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. Oh, what a mentor. What a mentor. What a mentor. I honor him in his absence. I honor him in his presence. I honor his grace. I honor him with my life. I honor the investment of the spirit upon his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down. God bless you. Let's get into the teaching very quickly. There is what you must know to take you from where you are now to where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Number one, let's examine the concept of success. What does it mean to be successful? I'll have to run. There is a lot to talk about tonight. What does it mean to be successful? Success means obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. Please write it. Very important. This is a school tonight. Success is obtaining or achieving or accomplishing a worthwhile goal. If you don't have anything to write, use the notepad on your phone. Please write something write something this is a school hallelujah place value on knowledge place value on information in heaven when the apostle was in heaven he said write write don't just hear write because there is only so much your mind can take hallelujah so what is success obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal one of the things that I've seen in my life and I've seen across different territories, especially in the continent of Africa and even in Nigeria, is that there are many sincere, please listen, many well-meaning Christians who may remain failures for the rest of their lives. Please listen. We're going to examine something very powerful tonight. Why is it that many Christians are failures? So many believers, so many tongue-talking Christians, prayer warriors, sincere Christians that have character, men who love God, very, very sincere people, honest, well-meaning believers, but they never get to accomplish or achieve anything. They never get to transform a generation. They never get to rise beyond the limitations that they found themselves in. Why is this so? Hallelujah. 
and I got to understand something very important and very powerful. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. I was asking the Lord this question and then one day the Lord showed me a scripture that blew my mind. And then I heard one of these men of God sharing this thing again. Again and again. The first person I heard talking about this was Dr. Mike Mudok. And then I heard Olumide Emmanuel again talking about it. Please look up. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. But let him that glory had glory in this, that he what? Understand it and know it me. Hold on. Why will the Bible use? I hope you understand that the, 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 the construction of scripture is very, very, very detailed and very intentional. It said, let him glory that he knows me and then that he understands me. Not just that he knows me alone. Not just that he understands me. And I said, ah, that's the point. There is a difference between knowing God and understanding God. Are you getting my point now? The knowledge of God is what we call in koinonia intimacy. You understand, you, you know his presence. You can sense his presence. You're seeing transformations happening in your life. The anointing of the Spirit of God is being felt strong upon your life. That's as a result of the knowledge of God. But when it comes to your success in life, you must understand the ways of God. The Bible says he showed his acts to the nation of Israel. But unto Moses he showed his ways. His principles. The inner workings that produce those results that are seen. So it's not enough to know God. You must understand the principles of the kingdom. And one of my obsessions is to open the body of Christ to understand the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mike Murdoch puts it this way. He says there are two dimensions to the knowledge of God. There is the person of Jesus Christ and there are the principles of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ secures you for eternity. The person of Jesus Christ secures your peace. But the principles of Jesus Christ secure your success here and now. Are you getting the difference now? Very, very profound and very important. The principles of Jesus. So, all of the people who we consider to be successful and are not believers have embraced the principles of Jesus. But they rejected his person. They will never accept that these truths that they are working with that is producing this success has come from God. They will never give him the glory. They will never acknowledge him as the Lord of their life. But they, they change the names of these principles. But you know that these are kingdom principles at work. But then we have on the other hand the church. We love God. We know everything about God. We know all the names of God from Genesis to Revelation. But we have rejected the principles of Jesus. So we have pastors, we have leaders, we have all kinds of people who never get to make any kingdom impact in their lifetime. But tonight God is separating us through wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. There are laws and principles that must be understood and obeyed in order to be successful in this kingdom please write it down there are laws and principles that must first be understood and then obey in order for you to achieve true success has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender hallelujah it's not about age it's not about your advantage or your disadvantage. Jesus was born in Nazareth. And apparently the Nazarenes had a testimony that they were failures. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But the best gift came out of Nazareth. Are you following me now? So when it comes to success, please and please deliver yourself from this luck mentality. A lot of people just believe we have been taught by well-meaning pastors, well-meaning preachers that whoever God wants to bless, he will bless. Whoever God does not want to bless, have you heard that? 
please be delivered this night in the name of Jesus Christ. It's impossible. Listen, when you understand the laws of the kingdom, you will know why God is love and you will know why God is just. Righteousness and justice, the Bible says, are the foundations of his throne. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The ultimate equation for kingdom success. Many of us read it, we just recite it, but there is a powerful revelation. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. There are laws, there are principles that must be understood and must be obeyed in order to be successful. Listen, let me tell you something. Please look up. There are many people who hear what I'm saying right now and just make up their mind and say, No, forget it, it's just nonsense. We have seen people who don't know anything and God just bless them. Have you heard preachers like that? I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting down and a blessing. What is your concept of a blessing? We are talking about socks. I mean sustained success that can be imparted to generations. And I'm not talking of money or finance necessarily. Hallelujah. Doing big things for the kingdom. Accomplishing much for his majesty. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book that contains laws the laws of the kingdom many times when we hear law we are just thinking law of old testament no 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 the laws of the kingdom were there before genesis 1 are you getting my point the laws of the kingdom are not the laws of the old testament no they have been there from the foundations of the earth they are the very principles that heaven is governed by shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that means do it consistently that thou mayest observe to what it's not enough to confess it's not enough to meditate there is a doing according to how many all not 90 percent the equation of success is so strict that 90% is still F. For then, after you have done this, not during, not before, please help me read that last, that, that last, uh, the, the, the last clause there, for then. Are you ready? One to read. For then, thou shalt make, and thou shalt have, who will make his way? He said, you, will make your way prosperous that means it is your responsibility if you want to remain at the level you are now are you getting my point now we keep blaming god on things that god has no business one of the things that i have learned in my life is the ability to accept responsibility it's so easy to blame our parents for the way we are right now right many young people we stand and have the gods and the effrontery to insult them and we say our parents they were careless they were this but look at how old you are now you've even forgotten that you are now 35 years doing the exact same thing you were complaining right from when you were 18 and you are still making you are making worse decisions because you are exposed to more opportunities and information many of us like to talk about the government you know people say the money in nigeria how can one person loot 170 million they would have shared it to all of us can i tell you something look up share the money in nigeria equally to everybody i give you 24 hours it will return back to the people that had it initially guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed For then shall thou make your ways, what? Prosperous. And you will have good success. May God give us good success. There is a difference between good success and bad success. 
good success is the kind of success that exalts the name of Christ, keeps you in integrity, and you can, when you kill a man to be rich, that's bad success. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you sleep around for money, that's bad success. When you give bribes and tips in your office for promotion, that's bad success. The success of many people in Nigeria has a curse upon it because it is bad success. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Very, very important. I want us to examine certain things very, very quickly. Um, let's look at Jeremiah 6 verse 16. One other thing I want you to realize about success is that success is not coincidence. Success is not magic. Success is not luck. There's no such thing as that. A man said, if you wake up and find yourself successful, be sure you are not sleeping. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see and do what? Ask. Everybody say ask. Everybody say inquire. Everybody say pursue. Ask for the what? That means those parts are already there. You don't need to invent it. You don't need to discover a road. I mean to try to invent a road that has been found. He said ask for the ancient part. Where is the good way? It's only the good way that can give you good success. Is that true? And he said and walk therein. You can ask and they can show you and you can sit down and still be looking. He said, when you find it, walk therein. What's the result? He said, you shall find rest for your souls. But what is the church saying? But they said, we will not walk. Is that not the testimony of many people? We will not walk. One day, God will bless us. God is seeing me praying. You wait and see. And we keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Hallelujah. I come from a lineage of missionaries. My grandfather, they were the founding fathers and the trustees of the Church of Christ in Nigeria. You go to the history and you are checking, you will see my mother when they were all small, sitting there in the picture, and my father too. That, my, my grandfather. Hallelujah. My blood father was a Baptist serve God diligently with his life brothers and sisters if, if there is any couple that I've seen in my life who are men of character and integrity that truly love God I can tell you my parents it, but it did not change the situation in my family are you getting what I'm saying I knew times when my mother would lock the door you would hear her shouting and crying and praying and at a point I said, Kai God, but you self now. Wow. Ah, somebody is crying like this to you. What you do not know can destroy you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm going to share with us a few principles. Before I go there, let me just say something quickly. The difference between failure and success is the voice that you have chosen to trust. I must say this before we continue. The difference between your success in life or your failure is the voice that you have chosen to trust. It's not enough to just listen. The Bible said, be careful how you hear. You can hear a wrong voice and believe that voice for years to your detriment. The difference I can never help you to become successful until I change the wrong voice you are listening to. Adam and Eve kept hearing the voice of God and as long as they had the voice of God and walked in his ways, they were successful. The day they had what? Another voice. Is that true? Lucifer came with another voice and he misled them. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, it said, And they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? Hallelujah. And Adam, uh, that's three of, chapter 3 or 4. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. What did God say? Who told you 
that means you've started hearing another voice your success in life listen please is highly dependent on the voice you have chosen to trust not just here our decisions in life are based on the convictions that words have brought for us if i convince you right now that if you come and kneel down on this altar you will get breakthrough will you be embarrassed doing it you will just come and kneel down is that not true if i convince you right now that if you slap lawrence your breakthrough will come guaranteed as stupid as it sounds you will find out that there are people who will come passionately they say oh lawrence it's not like i'm a wicked person but i need to the whole body of christ is moving at the frequency of convictions and words and the bible says there is as it were many voices and none of these voices are without effect that means the voice you permit to speak to you is the voice that molds your success unfortunately many of us in the body of christ have received not necessarily wrong voices but inaccurate voices not necessarily wrong but that the equations they have given us were not complete so we grew up with convictions that are not thorough not potent enough to deliver unto us the things that are required and that's why god is helping someone tonight i can never change your life until you are willing to change the voice the convictions that you have trusted and kept mm. hallelujah i'm going to teach on three basic principles number one very important i'm not going to talk too deep in it number one if you want to be successful please listen we're going to talk about the principle of mentorship listen this has become such a controversial issue i have a series just for this and i trust that when god grants grace we are going to deal with it it's, it's been such a controversial issue in the body of christ there have been all kinds of imbalances about the concept of mentorship many people in their innocence have been misled into all kinds of junks have been threatened by all kinds of wrong ideologies but let me tell you a few things about mentorship very important first samuel 3 verse 12 to 13 please help us media we we'll need to be very fast mentorship is a very important aspect of our lives there are two ways to learn in life number one mistakes number two mentors there are two ways to learn in life you learn through your mistakes or you learn through your mentors hallelujah mentorship is very very important please pay attention to what i'm sharing tonight if you ever are interested in success in the kingdom 3 verse 12 and 13 3 verse 12 and 13 first samuel 3 verse 12 and 13 thank you holy spirit is somebody getting blessed tonight hallelujah all right let's read together one to read and in that day i will perform against eli all things which i have spoken concerning his house when i begin i will also make an end verse 13 why he said for i have told him that i will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not and he restrained them not there are two ways to learn in life mistakes and the ministry of mentors is so so important second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 very powerful scripture please if you listen to what i'm sharing just three laws that i share tonight it would dramatically change your life second timothy 2 verse 2 everyone please read one to read of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what teach others also so what i had 
I commit to faithful men. And those faithful men teach and commit others. This is how the chain of success works in the kingdom. A mentor is not just one you submit to and admire. That's what a lot of people do in the body of Christ and they call mentorship. So wrong. A mentor is not just one that you submit to. It's not just one that you admire. A mentor is not just a man who instructs you. A mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey. A mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey. Not whose instructions you hear. Not whose instructions you discuss. Not whose instructions you pray about. Are you seeing the nonsense that are done in the body of Christ? All in the name of mentorship. And many people never get blessed. You do not see the signature of what they attempt to be representing. Hallelujah. A mentor is not just a person you submit to. It's not just a person you admire. Oh, I admire this person. And that means the person is your mentor. Impossible. A mentor is not even the person you sit under. It's not just the person you hear. A mentor is one whose voice you have come to trust as the voice of God in your life. This is very, very dangerous. If you understand it, you won't just get into all this flamboyancy that people do in the name of mentorship and confuse themselves into perdition. A mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you follow and obey. A mentor is not one whose instructions you discuss. Please get this. Get this. Get this. This is a powerful um, principle about mentorship. A mentor is not one who talks to you and you say, okay, I've had you. Let me go and pray about it. You've had people say all those kinds of junks. They say, I need to go and pray and confirm. You do not trust his voice. There is no man in scripture who truly listened to the instruction of a mentor and missed it. It's impossible. From Genesis to Revelation, you read it. Is someone getting blessed tonight? Very important. Let me share with you a few principles about mentorship that will bless us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Someone is getting blessed in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. A mentor is a shortcut to your future. Mentorship is shortcut to your future. Experience is the slowest way to learn. Experience is the slowest way to learn in life. If you think everything you are going to get in life, there are all kinds of arrogant people who will never listen to any man. You don't have any man's books you are reading. There are no tips. I hear the Holy Spirit for myself. Experience is the slowest way to achieve. It's like going to Lagos by trekking. You will arrive, but you may arrive dead. Hallelujah. A mentor is your coach. He tells you what you are doing right and he tells you what you are doing wrong. A mentor is not your friend. A mentor is not your confidant. You see where a lot of people miss it? Please, you neglect this principle I'm sharing. Just know that you have signed an agreement with failure. Guaranteed. A mentor is not your best friend. Your best friend loves you the way you are. Hallelujah. But a mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are. This is the difference between a mentor and your best friend. Your best friend loves you. You will make all kinds of blunders and your best friend will say, It's alright. All things work together for them that love God. Who are the called. Because we want your your friend wants to have that relationship and that rapport so they will forbear a lot of things they will overlook a lot of things so your friend you can be in a room with your friend 
and be breaking a lot of laws and your friend can forbear the day you leave your friend and go to another place that's where you see the gravity of your blunders because your friend has is somebody understanding what i'm saying there are many of you that you think you are doing very well because around you are people who can tolerate you to death but mentorship reveals your weakness and provokes you to change a mentor has nothing nothing absolutely nothing to lose by your stubbornness or your lack of listening hallelujah it's not this kind of thing that okay i like this lady and she does something wrong and i want to correct her. i say ah let me correct this lady now and let this thing backfire and say okay no problem god you are that's not mentorship brothers and sisters that's called friendship are you getting my point a man who can look at you and rebuke you and correct you a man who your success does not come as a big deal to him are you getting my point now hmm. help us holy spirit is someone getting blessed listen let me tell you something wisdom does not necessarily come with age you must understand this a mentor is somebody who can correct you i want to say something that will bless you right now correction from your pastor or your leader or your mentor or if you are working your superior is god's protection to you from your next tragedy are you getting my point when when your leader or your boss or your superior corrects you it is god using them to save you from the next blunder and tragedy you are about to make he said my son pay attention don't just hear there is a difference between hearing and listening hearing is just sound listening is hearing with the intention of obedience that's the difference between listening and hearing there are many people who hear all kinds of things i have been more blessed from the men of god and geos of many ministries than even the workers in those ministries they are there walking they keep hearing but they never listen is god challenging someone tonight Thank you, Jesus. Mentorship is impartation. Mentorship is impartation. A man imparts his grace, his wisdom. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another person. You are learning through someone else's pain. He already made blunders that you are about to make and he can save you decades of failure and recovery if only you will listen please make sure you are writing in one hour brothers and sisters look at me in one hour i can read somebody's book and gain an experience that took him 30 years of pain and mistakes again and again are you getting my point in one hour i can for paying 500 naira pastor i can receive someone's book and sit down and gain wisdom that took someone 30 years when i read rediscovering the kingdom years ago the book just came out i made sure that i ordered it i wrote a letter to my uh, miles munro and i told him i've been blessed by your ministry may god bless and honor you and he replied me he said may god bless you use the book i got that book i paid so much when it came into the country i made sure i was one of the first people that got it and i sat down and he said it took him 30 years of the dealings of the spirit but within one day you can get wisdom from the pain of a man is somebody getting blessed do you want to have to be the one to pay every price by yourself your lifetime is not enough to correct yourself until you make it right Is someone getting blessed in this place thank you jesus christ 
A mentor is one who knows already what you need to know. A mentor is one that already knows what you need to know. Not one that is struggling to know what you need to know. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. A mentor is one who knows what you need to know. Whose mentorship do you treasure and value? That's what God is asking you. Whose voice have you been listening to to shape your life? I can tell you that this is the reason why you are where you are right now. Whose voice do you treasure and value? Very, very important. Mentorship is so, so important as far as the kingdom is concerned. Very, very important. Listen, I want to teach you how to be blessed from a mentor's life. There is an attitude. Hallelujah. This is where a lot of people are missing it. Please listen. I wrote it down here and let me just read it. I said to be blessed from a mentor's life, you must receive the person of that man of God. Not just the message, the person. I see a lot of people who say forget about the person. Just receive the message and leave him. That's junk and nonsense. Are you getting my point? You must first receive the person of that man of God. I know a lot of people who talk wrong things against men of God and great leaders. They sit down in conversations that tear them into pieces. And then they sit down and want to attempt to get the treasure in them. It never works that way. You cannot sit down and tear a man into pieces and believe that you will receive from that man. The law does not work that way. The first requirement is that you must receive the person. You must be able to trust the voice of God. Mentors are not perfect people. They are people who have knowledge. They are people who have experience. They are people who have grace. If you are not if you if you do not have the capacity to overlook a man's limitations i'll never forget one time i went somewhere and some people were discussing about benny Hinn shortly when the divorce happened is someone getting blessed tonight they were talking about benny Hinn and i had the people just shouting and they were saying i'm disappointed in benny Hinn. imagine how can a great man and i just kept quiet i was listening to them We were watching a program and they were just talking tearing this man down say this generation self now what is happening you don't even trust anybody again and i listened to them and later on i called the person i said how could you be this unwise hallelujah over an information you do not even understand you are not benny Hinn's pa you don't know anything it's easy to sit down and discuss about people isn't it it's easy to sit down and watch people play football since there's World Cup. Let me use that example. And say, ah, Nigeria, you did score. Shame on you. That heading, if you just had it, is easy. Talk is cheap. Until you get to that place, you will see how easy or how difficult it is. It's easy to see a pastor leading his church and sit down and say, Kai, I don't like this. These guys are so boring. This blah, blah, blah. This pastor's wife is not even very, very anointed. Why is she quoting this and that? until the day you have the opportunity you will pray and preach every sermon you can preach in one month and that's when you will know that pastoring is not child's play you will fish you will copy the teaching of every man of god till your congregation can even tell you the message and you will find out that it's just it's just february then you will begin to respect every preacher that preaches every week that you stand on your stage and say ah but is that scripture correct it's easy to stand and judge. Idahosa said, never criticize a man until you have done two times what the man has done once. And I listened to them. And I called the person. I said, no, don't do this. If you talk like this, you will never receive the grace upon his life. And I told him, you need to go to God and say, Lord, I am sorry. hallelujah 
you must receive the person of that man of God. Number two, you must trust his voice. You must trust that his voice represents the voice of God in your life. Please listen to this. I'm not teaching you error. Nobody obeyed instructions from a man of God in scripture and went to perdition. If he's a true man of God, You must be willing to submit to his instructions as coming from God. Listen, you never get a mentor give you instructions and you say, I've had you, sir. Let me go and think about it. That's nonsense. Read your scriptures. If you trust that the voice of this man of God is the voice of God, you prove it by absolute loyalty. This looks very childish, but I will show you why so many people do not receive i remember one time when abuja and this particular great man of god we just sat down listening to him and when when i saw that man i kept quiet for hours this man was talking some of my colleagues were just making noise and i kept quiet i was listening to this man and he was looking at me eyeball to eyeball and at a point he said what kind of person are you don't you talk and i kept quiet I was just listening listening and later on he cornered me outside and he said i know what i've seen in the spirit about you pray for me i said i'll pray in my room not here he said lay hands on me i said no i won't do that many foolish young preachers say yes sir you are celebrating my me kneel down let me show you what anointing can do see that no this is why many people do not let me tell you success is not about business or job if you do it it accounts for less than 10 percent of the equation of success if you neglect these laws you neglect it to your detriment praise the lord is someone listening it is only when you have accepted the voice and the person of this man then his message his grace and his anointing will be effective in your life it's amazing how people come and sit down in a meeting listen to their men of god and immediately they come out they sit down in forums and try to discuss and tear everything into pieces and just sit down and say man oh boy that thing this man is saying this is nonsense i remember one man who was criticizing mike Modoc and he was even warning me he said be careful this seed seed man everything is seed every what sort of man is that you will stand and say they should sow a seed into his life i said that's all you saw about this man that's everything you saw about this man i said time will tell years later i saw him in the midst of financial crisis he was reading one of mike Modoc's book why people do not receive their financial harvest see let me tell you something about life <laughs> life can humble any level of arrogance it's only a matter of time there are realities that is like a wall you will box it till you get tired at that point hallelujah bible says that david cried and cried until he had no strength he came to himself Thank you, Jesus Christ. Mentorship creates seven things. And let me just put it, like I said, we have a series and we'll talk on it more extensively. Mentorship creates seven things in your life when you embrace that ministry. Number one, it creates impartation. Number two, it creates guidance. Number three, it creates access. It creates impartation. It creates guidance. It creates access. Number four, it creates endorsement. Number five, it creates promotion or a platform for promotion. Number six, mentorship creates a platform for wisdom. Seven, mentorship creates speed in your life. Take note of this. It was through the wisdom of a dear woman of God that I respect who called me one day. I used to talk about men of God and I will mention their names. 
and with my zeal I would just be talking and the woman called me one day and said my son you are a young man and you have a very long journey to go God is going to use you greatly never criticize a man of God you are too young to know everything around a man of God's life make sure from today and I said mommy God is my witness and in your presence this is the last time I will ever open my mouth and talk about a man of God mentioning his name I would challenge wrong doctrines but not to talk about a man of God wisdom I would have destroyed an opportunity in the height of what God will be doing in Koinonia. One day now, I will make a foolish decision, maybe on air. Are you seeing that now? This is how great people, I'm showing you the wisdom and the blessings of mentorship. There are many of you who have seen people and you disregard them because you think a mentor is only one who has your kind and level of anointing. There are wisdoms that are greater than the realm of anointing. Levels of wisdom. Hallelujah. I learned silence from one of our boards of trustees. I notice every time you are talking to that man, he will keep quiet. You will talk and say all kinds of things and he will keep quiet. I didn't used to be like that. Especially if God has revealed to me what, what your problem is. Before you talk, I say, please save, save us the time. And he taught me the art of listening. That it is wisdom to listen to a man. See that? Thank you, Jesus Christ. You don't decide or choose your mentor. Let me shock you now. <laughs> mm. Mentorship, just like your assignment, is discovered. You discover them and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons in your life we have a series on that and i will teach you you don't sit down and choose your mentor because you will never choose a man who will flog you are you getting my point you are smart enough mentorship is like your assignment why will i choose a man who when people are celebrating me and saying apostle joshua selman you look at me and say young man no problem but there is more work to be done keep that all of those accolades and let's work do you think I naturally will like that kind of person? Mentorship is like assignment. You don't choose. That's why a lot of people choose somebody and he rebukes them. He said, oh boy, I am seeing that you like women. Say, ah, what sort of embarrassment is this? And he moves from the name you used to call him, maybe man of God or daddy or papa. He says, sir, please. Ah, I don't like women. What kind of thing is this? I am a prophet or I am an apostle. You are an apostle or I am an apostle? <laughs> hallelujah how can you tell me i like women me and you don't even see me around he says i'm telling you you like women go and work on it say no i don't like this guy let me go to this other one he said you are okay just believe push yourself and then the day something backfires truly you find yourself sleeping around you will now get up and say goodness and this man saw it i told one of my friends something years ago immediately i looked at him I said you have a lot of tendencies and i want you to work at it at that point he even got offended that day but after like four or five years he called me one day he said can you remember something that you told me he said honestly i am embarrassed to even believe that i'm a victim of this i told him no there's no point for embarrassment once you acknowledge something change look let me tell you let me tell you mentorship is so powerful somebody can sit down and look at you while you are bubbling with all your zeal, he can see all the tendencies. Oh, I'm a millionaire, let money come. Oh, kingdom, you will see what will happen. And the person says, make sure you take out time to start praying. Because I see money destroying you. This is not word of knowledge. This is, this is the excellency of pain and wisdom and experience. It's amazing how people come for counseling, pastor. They come on Monday for counseling and they are now coming to seek my advice and they just come, they sit down. Good afternoon, sir. I want to seek your advice. And for 30 minutes, they are just running their mouth and talking and I'm keeping quiet, listening to them. And after 30 minutes, they say, I feel very relieved. And I say, let's pray. <laughs> let's pray. 
They say, sir, and, and you know the Bible says in the book of this and that and that and that and that. A lady, I remember a lady came for counseling and I like putting wine on top of my fridge. And she looked at it and said, I hope this is not alcoholic wine. And I just looked at the lady. She believed that was funny. And then I looked. It means you don't trust. You believe that there's something I'm doing hidden. If I stand and we preach and we make altar call and we talk about standing in holiness and truth and you see wine on my table and you look and I'm feeding you spiritually, if you cannot trust that the wine that is on my table is non-alcoholic, how can you trust that I'm not sleeping around and moving in integrity? How can you trust that I'm not going to get anointing from somewhere? Are you getting the point now? so many people have made themselves failures and we keep blaming god whereas there are irrefutable principles no man outgrows the need to be guided in his life no man at whatever level no man You discover your mentors and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons of your lives mentors are not necessarily perfect people please is someone getting blessed tonight mentors are not necessarily perfect people they are people who have come who you have come to trust the word and in the instructions of God in their mouth now look at me there is an attitude that you must have every time you are before a great man please listen this is not human worship when you sit before a mentor or before a great man only ask questions and listen when you sit before a great man that's not time for discussion a lot of arrogant people get access to men of God that other people are dying to see. And they sit down and for 30 minutes they are running their mouths and talking nonsense. They are saying we are colleagues in the ministry and we are just talking. Or we are colleagues in this. You sit down with a woman who has trained eight children and you are a young lady getting married two weeks. You are already talking to her about pregnancy. Say this and that and that. I read it in this book. This woman gave birth to eight children out of the eight there were twins and the woman is just looking at you like this yes you went to school i didn't go to school and you sit down you went there and say mommy what advice can you give me now that i'm going into a marital home and you just look and you are wondering after all she was poor i went to school i i, I just returned from america and the woman is just looking at you you believe this woman is too old or naive to understand what you are going or maybe a lady is pregnant for instance and maybe she wants to seek advice from a woman because of maybe any complication two months three months into the pregnancy and you now look at her and say mommy is there any way you can help me eight children eight children and you believe is such a level of arrogance Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to honor and recognize greatness when I see it. When I sit before men who have grace, when I sit before men who mentor my life, I, some, I don't even sit on the chair sometimes. God is my witness. I will sit down and my phone, I'm just waiting. Every time you see results in a man's life, there is more than what you can see. Are you getting my point? If it is the equation of God, there is more than you can see. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. 
I'll never forget a young man who came from Kaduna. I remember the guy came and sat down and said, um, there's something wrong with my life. And I told the guy, I need to pray for you. He said, no, that's not the issue. And he was talking and saying all kinds of things. And then I was looking. Immediately he entered. I saw a spirit tormenting this guy. I said, let me, <laughs> I need to pray for you. It happened one time with another lady again from a ministry. I will not mention the name. No, she came and was saying all kinds of things. And this guy was talking, talking, talking. And he said, come on, that he even needs to ask me a question about this issue of deliverance. There's something. I said, please, I'm not here to argue with you. There are so many people sitting outside. Can I pray for you? The last thing this guy remembered was that he knelt down on the floor. And the protocol people, when he got up, he had scattered everywhere. Protocol people were helping him. The guy went back to his ministry. He has a ministry. Ah! He, he sent a text. He said, what is all this? And then he came. They came for Koinonia together with some of his, his followers and the people. And it opened him up to another reality. What you see is not all there is. There can be a lot more. I have taken challenges to men that are greater than me. And to me, those challenges look like mountains. But when I take it there, I, they just look and say, oh, is this it? Do this, do that. This is a simple issue now. And I'm like, goodness, how come I didn't think about this? Just like some people come with challenges and they are complaining. They are shouting. They won't let you talk. They say, you cannot imagine. Where will my school fees come from? Hey, hey, hey. And they are closing next tomorrow or whatever. And you are saying, calm down. Say, where we, do you know what it means to raise 20,000? Calm down. Whereas maybe God has already instructed you to pay the school fees. Just calm down. It's comforting when you can find a man who can walk over what looks like a mountain for you. I cannot tell you how many how people come with all kinds of challenges and they come maybe for counseling and you can see that these things have prolonged for years and as soon as they enter i just start smiling because i know in less than five minutes this will be over whereas you can sit down arrogantly and remain there forever hallelujah help us holy spirit there is always a price to pay please listen there is always a price to pay to follow an uncommon mentor. There is always a price. It will cost you to follow a true mentor. Adaptation is the key to enjoying the ministry of a mentor in your life. Look at me. Never expect a mentor to adjust to your life. You are joking. If you cannot adjust to the person's life, I'll never forget when I went to Abuja one time to see a particular man of God. Four days, I had not seen him. Four days. And God was my witness that I never complained. I said, Lord, thank you. It's a, it's a privilege. This is how people too wait for counseling to see me. And they are not complaining. So I have no right to complain. There are people who call me, hello, hello, this and that and that. And I tell them, okay, we have a counselor. I say, please, I don't have that time. I can't wait. I'm busy. Ah, you are coming to see lecturers, professors, great men. And a young man just comes with his sack jeans. Is there any way we can just see sharp, sharp? Please, I have things to do. Pack your load and go back to your trouble and remain there. There is a price. Never forget this. There is a price to pay for mentorship. There is a price. Apostle Johnson Suleiman was talking and he said something. He said that um, every time he called um, um, Papa Ayo or Richard Jaffa, you know, he would call him and then he would say, Johnson, how are you? And that's how he would leave the phone there. He would be doing something. Johnson Suleiman said, that's how you wait. You can't complain. You can't argue. You can't off the phone. That's how you wait. And later on he said, just a minute, I'm coming back. And he will continue doing something else. Some of you would have been offended and angry. And say, do you not know I'm an apostle too? And then as a while, you say, okay, what is it? A mentor is not one who calls you apostle Joshua Selman. He should be able to say, Joshua, come. You see that? Sometimes we are used to the accolades of men. I am apostle. Even if you say pastor, they say, am I pastor? Is A the same thing as P? I'm not, I mean, you better call the correct thing. 
may God help us because if you get this principle alone many of us tonight this is the key to the next level of your life you have neglected the ministry of great men there is nothing embarrassing about acknowledging that there are people who have gone ahead of you praise the Lord pursuit is the only proof of passion there are people who get angry maybe they want to see me and maybe we are away on a trip and then they are angry and they call they say i've been calling you for two days and i say i'm sorry what's the issue they say please i've been trusting god for something in my life and you just finished quarreling me you have been calling me for two days i'm not responding whereas maybe i was preaching whereas maybe i was having time with god you know please and please brothers and sisters it takes humility to rise to the top if you are not ready to be humble get set to remain at that level hallelujah i shared with you my story on how i was already preparing to go to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter before they died i was going for a conference but my mission was to go and scrub the toilet and i i made up my mind that when i got there i would insist I'll tell them my job is to scrub the toilet for two solid weeks scrubbing the toilet every day there are two ways to receive from a man of God your seed and your service your seed and your service you can serve your way into an anointing you can sow your way into an anointing avoid familiarity i beg you koinonia listen to me let my conscience be clear before god that i taught you this avoid familiarity there are people in my life are daddy prophets here and the way the way that that prof respects me so much it even makes me embarrassed i never 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 will take his grace and his ministry and his wisdom for granted never ever hallelujah many of you do not understand the secret listen please listen this is where you may be missing a lot of things you can be with a man of god for a long time never forget who you are talking to it's not enough to talk to people never forget who jesus looked at them and said before your father Abraham was I am and they say ah, what are you saying never forget who you are talking to this is not human worship is the law these are the ancient parts that made people great I never get familiar there are all kinds of men of God something something happened yesterday and we're having a conversation one of the top protocol people in one of the reputable ministries i won't call their name just to honor the person he had been trying to reach me and he had called and called and called and called and somehow the call could not get through and you know he looked at his status and he was offended he is really an honorable person you see i mean the direct like pa of one of the great men of god in the country and he's been trying to reach me and for whatever reason when he got to our protocol department we were in we were in in, in a meeting in um in Quara State and so we could not attend to him and then eventually he got offended and then when he called you know he was speaking and he sounded a bit arrogant but when he told me who he was I would have said oh God you have told me who you are let me tell you who I am too I just told him I said I'm sorry sir I really apologize I am sorry we do not mean to disrespect the grace or the office that you're working we apologize on behalf of myself on behalf of the ministry immediately the man too said i'm sorry it's not like i just meant to talk like that it's just that you know this and that and that and that never be embarrassed to honor greatness when a great man rebukes you shut up whether he's right or wrong keep quiet don't get up and say i'm justifying myself what is all this human worship after all it is god continue and see how far it will take you when an elderly person rebukes me, when someone who has gone ahead of me rebukes me, all I say is thank you, sir. 
I'm grateful for the opportunity. You see, many of you don't have the opportunity to see the way these things happen because they happen in the secret place. And so you just believe that every time we're just standing, boss, 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 oh, I wish it were so. I wish it were so. I wish it were so. Praise the Lord. Number two, principle number two. Let's hurry up. Goodness, time is gone. The law of value. I'm talking about your assignments now. You want to be successful? Please listen to me. This will probably be one of the greatest revelations you've heard about your assignment. I want you to listen. Your assignment is called the law of value. Hebrews 10 verse 7, please. Hebrews 10 verse 7. God is changing someone's life here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 7. I'd like us to read it. One, two, read. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is what? It has been written. Your assignment, I have come to execute that which has been written. Write a few points about your assignment. Number one, everything created on the earth solves a problem. We taught this to the school of ministry in the course called personal transformation. Everything created, not these exact words, but then something similar. Everything created on the earth solves a problem. That means everything created has a divine assignment. Everybody say, I have a divine assignment. Whether you know it or not is irrelevant. Just say, I have a divine assignment. Because after this teaching tonight, in the name of the Lord, you will stop escorting others in destiny and start making a definite progress as far as your assignment is concerned. There are so many people escorting others. Jacob, had a prophetic grace that he never used until at the point of his death and he began to prophesy and see into his children and speak over them every man in the earth is a walking solution to a problem everybody in the earth is a walking solution to a problem say I am a walking solution to a problem yes your existence proves that there was a problem and god sent you to solve it and brothers and sisters fulfilling your destiny is solving that problem for your generation many have died without solving that problem and god had to take their the problems and transfer to other people as a double mandate upon them because some other people were not faithful the problems you solve decides your reward never forget this money is not a miracle money is not magic money is a formula it's a reward for solving problems i can look at your financial level today and i can tell you you are where you are proportionate to the problems you have solved that's why you will pay a gate man ten thousand right but you will pay a manager five hundred thousand what is the difference the problems they are solving the manager is under ac he's wearing suit he has a chef but you are still paying him five hundred thousand. the gate man is outside there's no ac in his small room but you are paying him ten thousand. you get angry and switch the people let them switch roles for two weeks and see what happens to that corporation let the gate man become the ceo give him all the files to sign and all the decisions to make and then you will see the way everything will nose dive within two weeks so the problem that you solve is what decides your significance. God does not decide your significance. It's God's desire for everybody. He said you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, but you decide your significance. There is no reason to envy any man. There is no reason to be jealous. Every one of us has in us the ability to solve problems. And the degree of the problems that you solve decides your significance. There are so many men of God 
angry at at crowd and they criticize crowd and they say forget it crowd does not mean anything a man can leave his state with so many churches and ministries there and travel a great distance to come and meet a man of god they perceive can be able to solve their problems let me tell you you become a money magnet when you master the art of solving problems men will pay you with their life is someone learning something tonight the problem you solve brothers and sisters decides your your reward i'm ministering the word right now i'm solving a problem it's a spiritual problem are you seeing that anybody who says preachers should not be blessed does not know what he's saying whenever you solve a problem according to the kingdom there is a reward whether you sell it or you give it free this is the only reason why i am not charging you for listening is that true because the jehovah jireh of my life who made this law in place will never leave me hungry you want money you want prosperity what problem are you solving whose problem are you solving are you seeing why the wealth of an arm robber is wrong because an arm robber points a gun he's not solving any problem but he wants to be rewarded prosperity is not a mystery brothers and sisters the problems you solve decide your significance when you solve a problem you create a divine debt d-e-b-t you create a divine debt it's like when you solve problems here on earth god is like making god i mean god owes you let me put it that way your assignment is decided by god but is discovered by you let's hurry up your assignment in life is decided by god but it is discovered by you Jeremiah chapter 1 he began to speak to the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb I called you and I ordained you to be a prophet is someone getting blessed now right the most important revelation you need to have about your assignment is what your uniqueness is your lifting is not in your similarity with others it is your difference your uniqueness there are many preachers in nigeria there are many preachers in zaria there are many preachers in kaduna what makes my ministry different what makes my ministry to the body of christ different what listen concentrate on your uniqueness not your similarity when it comes to purpose your uniqueness becomes your edge so if you are selling recharge card brother b is selling recharge card what is your difference what is that distinguishing factor that's what gives you an edge oh hallelujah i thank god for his wisdom how do you discover your assignment let's write it very quickly how do you discover your assignment number one what you hate is a clue to what you have been called to solve write it what you hate passionately is a clue that you have been anointed to solve it anger is the seed for change whatever gets you angry and agitated is what you were designed to change i hate ignorance i hate the effect of poverty on people i hate it with a passion I hate ignorance of the principles of God. I hate the fact that people do not recognize the Lordship of Christ. And these things have constructed my passion. They have built the framework of my teachings. What agitates you? Take note of the pain and the things that annoy you. Write very quickly two things that really agitate you. That every time you see it, you cry and you wish for change. There is an anointing there. There is always an anointing in the place of pain. Pain is the birthplace for genuine anointing.
Thank you, Jesus Christ. Identify your highest point of anger. Identify your highest point of anger. There is something that agitates you. When you see people go through it, when you see your family members go through it, something in you cries. That's the anointing of the Spirit. Hallelujah. When Moses saw the Egyptians suffering, something in him started rising up because there was a deliverer in him. Are you getting my point now? To an extent that he killed somebody. Have you been ignoring your pain? Do you know that in your pain is the voice of the spirit god has been speaking to you that you have been anointed for this reason there are many of us god has has anointed us to be saviors he has brought us in different mountains to do mighty things for the kingdom are you seeing what we have refused we have ignored please let me have your attention don't worry the holy spirit is just doing his thing God has anointed us in different ways. Take note of your pain. Take note. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number two, what do you love to talk about most in your life? Oh, that's a clue to your assignment. What do you love to talk about? There are many of you, you sit down five minutes, you have already seen the clothes everybody's wearing in Koinonia. There is grace there. Don't let anybody preach you out of it. There are some of you, when you see children, they can even flog you because of children. There is grace. Your passions, your passion. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon your passion. I remember when I was in secondary school, I would give everything. The little money that I'll have, I will share it and give everybody. They will buy meat, buy, buy everything, and I will suffer like a fool. But it was a passion I could not help. There are many families who build houses and just keep it and say, when a man of God comes to town, let him come and stay. Have you seen people like that? There, is, there are passions. It's just that many of us have not been trained to honor our passions. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. I will study my passions and I take my passions as a voice, as the voice of God speaking over my destiny. What is the conversation that excites you? There are conversations that when you start in my presence, I'm going to sleep or send you away. I guarantee you, even if you mention Jesus in the middle of the conversation, but there are things that excite me. Is it not amazing how somebody can be watching maybe a fashion show passionately and you are sleeping and snoring? The interest is just not there. Whereas you put belly in and I can be watching a crusade and I'm watching, I'm struggling with sleep. I'm nodding but I'm, I'm focused. And you are saying, what is this stress? Sleep. There is something. It's like fire in your bones. Have you been responding to your passions? When you find your assignment, you have found your reward system in life. When you find your assignment, brothers and sisters, you have signed exit out of a world of failure and poverty and mediocrity. And I mean what I'm saying. When you truly find your assignment, when the spirit takes over your soul, when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul your assignment must become your obsession brothers and sisters you will never excel in any area that has not become an obsession for you. Your assignment must become your obsession. And let me challenge you with one more thing before we round up this assignment issue. Listen to me. There must be a theme that, that defines the entire scope of your life. Let me tell you what that means. 
every time you mention or a robot what comes into your heart healing is that true benihin healing is that true billy graham evangelism jj okocha is that true if i mention your name and nothing comes to my mind your difference has not been refined enough hallelujah are you getting my point when you say tiger woods golf right tyra banks fashion people see them all smiling praise god if your life's mission cannot be summarized in one word you do not know it you can say my life's mission is is to bring the rescue the sh the, the lost sheep you know from all the will that look all of that long story there must be a theme that you can live for and die for hallelujah now i want to tell you something very powerful take note of opportunities in your life everything that rises from god camouflages as opportunities take note of opportunities opportunities help you to reveal discover and explore your assignment many of us do not know that god speaks through opportunities god never told david to kill goliath he saw an opportunity and he saw that he had been equipped to maximize that opportunity and he took advantage of that opportunity into an unending world he got a wife for free he got wealth for free because he maximized an opportunity and i want to tell you something god speaks again through favor this is how you know that you have been called in an area never stay in an area where there is no favor it's a sign that god is not there even in the prison joseph was still favored that's a sign that god is with you please and please make up your mind to follow the path of favor there are many of us struggling in areas where it's obvious god has been using the language of favor or otherwise to speak to you favor everybody say favor god speaks to you through favor never stay in a place where there is no favor the next thing you need to know about your assignment is that your assignment is geographical please get this you are not sent everywhere oh the lord may tell you in a vision i'm sending you to the nations that is a pregnant statement because you will raise other people who will get to the nations no single man will conquer the whole world you are sent to a person or a group of people you will always be celebrated when you get to the people where your anointing has been sent to bless stop trying to seek for recognition or approval everywhere god has not sent me to everybody it is good for me to understand that god has sent me to a people anytime you get to a place where you have been sent they will receive your anointing there are many people struggling in regions that god has not sent them they are trying to heal the sick they are trying to do everything forcing healing ministries forcing evangel they have run the whole ministry into death they are trying to organize crusades there is no grace there never forget that your assignment has its geography and isaac sold in that land not in any land abraham come i will take you to a place that is where i will bless you brothers and sisters after this program use this weekend especially for those who are trusting god for a place where you will stay you must never sit down and allow job to decide your geography it's a costly decision are you getting what i'm saying you must flog it out go on a fast for one day or two days if you can't fast take fruits or something light 
and flog it out with destiny and say oh god i know that my prosperity and my blessing is tied to geography let me tell you something i come from plateau state and the little years i've had serving god and ministry that state never opened up to me they were never opened and prepared to receive of my grace and it bothered me because i was blessing other people and blessing other states and i said lord what is it about this place this is my own very place let me be a blessing to them and god kept telling me again and again they are not ready to receive your anointing there is too much familiarity and do you know what happened the the city of just opened up for me through my teachings they never even knew i was the one it was students from Futmina and Yola and all of that, including my neighbor. I mean, neighbors that we grew up together. They took my teaching, my own uncle. My own uncle listened to one of my teachings and started crying. And then got to find out I was the one. And he cried and said, my own son is in ministry and is changing the world. And I'm here dying. And so that, that familiarity, they received the teaching not knowing it was me. And then when they had now respected the anointing, then God opened up to them, it is this person. Are you getting the point now? That's the reason why, although many of you are anointed, you find out that every time you get home, you just feel ordinary. That presence of the anointing never comes because you are the last born. You are the child everybody knows. Even if you tell them God is saying, they say, shut up. What do you know about God? But the day they are ready to receive your anointing, they will be amazed at the dimension that they will enter. Your assignment is geographical. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Your difference will be rewarded when you are geographically accurate. Listen, listen, please listen. Look up, look up before you write. Let me explain something to you. Um, come, Sam. How many of you agree and believe that Sam is a powerful worshiper? But do you know, as gifted as Sam can be, Sam can be in a territory where his grace is not celebrated and appreciated. How many of you have been in a place you know it's not pride that God has honored you? There are graces, there are giftings, but you are in a territory where nobody can celebrate your grace and God takes you even for a moment to a place and goodness even you you are shocked you never knew that you were that great until you got to that place and you see people celebrating that grace has it happened to anybody you keep singing and when you sing they just tell you go and sit down and you get to a place where people say sorry sir are you living right now please can you come and minister in our church which hotel are you saying Say they, they kept me in one car they say please come 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 make make arrangement make and you are saying goodness look let me tell you there are things that people do for me when i go for ministrations and i'm amazed i'm almost saying oh god please let this thing not become human worship and i'm i'm shocked honestly when i'm in my hotel room i'm now looking i'm like goodness ah i would discover every other thing that is left that i've not discovered <laughs> oh when you are in the geography of your assignment men will pay you in a way that will shock you they will pay for any and everything to receive your grace stop concentrating on places where you are tolerated there are many of you you are everybody tolerates you everywhere there is a place where your grace can be celebrated and I tell you, part of my life's goal as a leader in this ministry is to harness the giftings of people and to celebrate it and to make them great. Sam, God bless you. When we went to Quara State, Sam ministered and he led worship. He was so powerful. When it was the time, I don't know how many times he has seen himself as a man of God. Goodness, that was the first time I saw Sam moving very powerfully powerfully in the anointing i mean it was time to minister to the worshipers and you could see the anointing and the grace and these people were receiving after the ministration or oh, everybody almost every i think everybody except they were teasing yerima and they say it was only yerima they didn't come to meet him for counseling because he was a media person he was just snapping but everybody from protocol 
to every one of the people there were piles of people waiting for counseling you know what tells what that tells me those people have recognized their grace but they may come back home and you can just look at them sam how are you and you just shake him and say sam can you please come we have one small fellowship can you just sing one or two choruses celebrate greatness when you enter its presence don't be embarrassed don't pretend it's not there i always celebrate them they know it i celebrate the workers that's why we organize dinner at the end of the year for them to honor them to bless them and i use the opportunity to tell them i am grateful it's easy for people to see what god is doing in this ministry and say it's joshua selman it's not true what you see is the brainchild of people who are by far smarter than me, greater than me, who have decided to submit their gifts to be used for the kingdom. And I'm wise enough to know that these people deserve honor. Are you getting my point now? That's why we provide free bus transport because we, we respect the gift of God that is in you people and everyone here. We never, you never see me treat people based on who your father is. I don't want to know whether your father is a minister, whether you are married to, to, the, to a relation of the president. Uh -uh. No, we no man after the flesh. When you come here, we treat you with dignity and respect as much as possible. Is someone learning something, please? Let's finish up on the assignment and touch the last law and then we'll pray. Just give me 10 minutes and then we'll be out of here when you are where you are assigned nobody can compete with you this is a powerful revelation when you are at the place of your assignment hear me brothers and sisters no man can compete with you i see a lot of preachers struggling i've seen a lot of men of god with all humility wasting their time and their energy trying to do the things that i'm doing i'm doing it with ease because there is grace there i see a lot of people struggling putting themselves under needless pressure and i say why why i never try to do what i am not gifted anointed skilled or trained for I rather bring in a grace that can function in that capacity and then we receive of that ministry now let me advise you especially if you are in ministry or you are in any form of leadership there's something i wrote that is very powerful you don't give yourself to people listen you give yourself to god and you give god to the people you will die if you want to meet everybody's needs by yourself Give yourself to God and give God to the people. Many preachers are dying and killing themselves. They want to do everything for everybody. No, sir. No, sir. Give yourself to God and then give God to the people. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number three. This is the last and then we'll pray someone's life is changing tonight i tell you you will walk out of this place knowing that you will enter extraordinary success i don't care what the limitations are in the name of jesus christ as we talk about this just just pray can you just pray in one minute and say lord i love your laws i love your laws go ahead and pray just pray in one minute as i talk about this last law just few minutes our time is gone and then you will be blessed and will pray. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love.
of your tree. I love my love. I love your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Shibala Katabaladaba. Somebody's life is about to change. First Timothy chapter 5, 17 and 18. The last law we'll talk about is the law of honor. The law of honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every time I teach on this, something happens to someone's destiny. The law of honor. First Timothy 5, 17 and 18. Look up everybody. Let's read. One, two, read. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what? Double honor. Especially they that labor in word and in doctrine. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. First Peter 2 verse 17. And then I'll teach. This for me is one of the greatest laws of success. It may not be like that for you, but this for me. Everybody read. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time now, want to go. Honor all men. And honor the king. Honor all men. And honor the king. Wisdom. Is the ability to recognize difference but honor is the celebration and the rewarding of that difference to honor a man means to celebrate and to reward his uniqueness that's what it means to honor to honor a man means to celebrate and reward his uniqueness. Please look up. Honor in the school of success is the seed for access. Say it one more time. Everybody, honor is the seed for access. You will never access a place, a grace, an anointing a dimension of wisdom that you dishonor. Every grace you dishonor lives your life. Every grace you honor is multiplied in your life. Never forget this. Never forget this. When the devil wants to drain you of grace, he makes you to begin to dishonor the graces around you. And you find out that nothing will be. The Bible says, honor all men. And then honor the king. This is why we take our time to worship God. We take our time to honor the king. Honor always creates favor. Let me tell you this. If you've been looking for how to create favor in your life, I'm telling you how it comes now. Favor, honor always creates favor 100% of the time. The favor in your life will flow in the direction of honor. You dishonor men, you will never experience favor. Listen, listen. Look at me. This is Pastor, Pastor Pete Rock's wife. Get this. Hallelujah. Pastor Pete is my friend. He's my brother in the ministry. I love him so much. He respects me so much and I honor him so much. This is his wife. Are you getting my point? If I treat his wife well, I have communicated that honor. She will speak well about me in the presence of her husband and in the presence of another. Is that true? Is that true? So I am teaching you that the reason why many of us have not seen favor with men is that we have not engaged the law of honor. Many young people do not honor their parents. And you do not know why favor does not leave them to you. There's all kinds of disrespect around. 
the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Let me tell you why many young people are struggling in Nigeria. I, I want to be very sincere with you. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. It says, so that your days will be long and it will go well with you. Are you seeing why it's not going well with many people? I know people who stand and look at their parents and insult them. Call their mother prostitute. Call their father drunkard. And it may be true what they are saying. But let me tell you the truth. You dishonor your parents, you are in for failure failure that God will not stop except you cry for mercy and change is someone getting blessed never dishonor elders I don't care what level of grace you get to as I am like this if I see an elderly woman that I know carrying something maybe she went to grand and all of that I see mothers around they go to the engine to go and grind by themselves as old as they are. They put it on their head. They are going. And immediately they are going. You see the child just bouncing out with one lady he calls his girlfriend. Or one guy she calls her boyfriend. They don't even know what they are doing. They are just bouncing. And they are, Mom, see ya. And they are going. And the mother is carrying this. This is dishonor. The Bible says if you don't honor your parents. Listen to what I'm telling you. It says it will not be well with you. As simple as that hallelujah oh i will say it i will say it there are many of us we have no respect at all for elderly people there are even people that beat their parents that one is not just that it will not be well with you you just brought a curse upon your life if you ever take your hand and beat an elderly person especially your parents whether they speak to you or not i am telling you scripturally the bible says a man that curses his father his light shall be taken away and it shall be dim for him that's what the bible says i will never never rebuke an elder these are laws there are many graduates they thought he's just getting degree now you have gotten the degree nothing is happening they thought it's just oratory and all of that. No. They thought it's just reading business books. They've read all the business books. There are no patriarchal blessings upon their lives. No parental blessing. There's no elderly person that has spoken to you and said, let it go well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The law of honor. Honor creates favor. What is favor? Favor is someone willing to solve your problems for you. That's favor. When someone is willing to solve your problems for you. Whether financial problems, spiritual problems. When you honor men, you have access to their grace. Look, let me tell you. If a door has been closing again and again and again especially the door to the grace of a man of god check well there is dishonor there the entire ten commandments was all about honor honoring god and honoring men god is so obsessed with honor it's not enough to believe in a man of god you must honor that man to ever get the grace i taught this in commanding results and it's all oh goodness i cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that have come from people many of us do not honor grace you allow familiarity i'm not teaching human worship hallelujah learn to celebrate greatness when you see it please write this down learn to celebrate greatness never trivialize a man's accomplishments especially if he's spectacular you say this woman is a director in 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 this particular parastata so what about it anybody can be a director why are you not a director it's amazing how we trivialize a lot of things and she's behaving like this is it because she's a man of god's wife what's the big deal about being a man of god's wife that's why god didn't make you a man of god's wife you see that celebrate greatness I, I, I shared this and I'll say it again. 
I will never allow a man greater than me to be in a place and he's paying for something I can pay for and it's within my power to pay I will fight with that man there or that woman man of God or no man of God I will fight till I pay for it but there are many of us you come and sit down and you see elderly people standing and you just sit down say I beg forget oh this is not the issue of anything this is my right you see a lot of people do that and we laugh about it and you find out that in spite of all the prayer and the anointing service and everything no job no marriage no nothing and you do not know that this is the law we are violating how many children have gone to meet their parents to kneel down and say i'm of a marriageable age right now please bless me release the anointing that made you get married upon my life you are there complaining that the home is not going well you, you thought you were playing now 35 36 and counting learn this night god is bringing deliverance for you it's not everything that is about witches and wizards. We like passing responsibility to the devil. Take responsibility this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Honor. There are many men of God. They, they have little ministries, 10 members, 12 members, and you hear the way they preach and lambast ministers. I had the other day, the other man talking, and do, they know nothing about organization. They know nothing about finance. They don't even have the money to be able to learn finances. They know nothing about organization. Yet they sit down in that little mindset, local champions, and begin to castigate and, and, and talk about everybody. See, stop it tonight. If you are in the attitude of trivializing people's success, repent tonight. Every time you see success, kill envy fast by celebrating it immediately. The lady is beautiful. Say it fast before the devil now tells you this and that. Ah, I appreciate you. You're a lovely lady. Very pretty. God bless you. That's all. You can never criticize what you have celebrated. Hallelujah. Sam is singing, eh? He's singing, but what's the, what's the big deal, Jare? There's one other guy that sang. It's really not about the other guy. He's intimidated, so he's using the other guy to turn down another person. You, you cannot sing anything. Now you are, you are just looking and saying, well, this lady, what's she trying? She's trying to show us that she can speak English. Once you find yourself criticizing people, you are communicating a dissatisfaction. It's natural with human beings. Manage it through the law of honor. Are you getting what I'm saying? I celebrate men of God. I celebrate vessels of honor generously. Many of us are very embarrassed. Let me tell you a few things that you should never do. Look up please. Never try to introduce a pastor or a preacher in your church or your fellowship and say this is not a new person is one of us is is one of our friends i you know he's not a he says you know a lot of people do that they say this is one of us uh, and then somebody who has trained and helped and invested in you say he's is an elder uncle just because he cannot accept that he's a great man and we begin to use all kinds of english see that or if i want to introduce um pete rock's wife now she was a member of koinonia here before he used his eagle eyes <laughs> you know all all of that and then he came up and, and carried and all and all of that but listen it has changed hallelujah i can keep looking at her and say this and that uh -uh. this is my friend's wife and she deserves my honor and i will honor her any day I will never see her trekking somewhere and not stop the car to pick her. I don't care where she's going. This is honor. Are you getting my point? Many of you do not know the law of honor. I celebrate men in the secret and in the open. I've been following a conference. A conference right now. I had to follow Mike Mudok's conference with David Ibiome. And I've been listening pastor and eating the videos again and again. There's a conference going on in Koza. I cannot attend it. And I've been following it online. Paying the internet right now as I'm preaching. It's paining me, but I'm supposed to. 
I'm supposed to have been following the conference. But I sure will remedy for it. Benihin came to Accra. I was happy. I said, I, I, must, I must go and meet him. And all. I was so excited. When I checked the date, I found that it was miracle service. I said, ah, oh God, you have to compensate me for this. If you are embarrassed about honor, you will not be honored too. Are you getting my point? Please, is somebody learning this tonight? Say in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you and I celebrate you truly. Say it. Even if he's pinching you, say it. I know he's not your mate, but say it. I honor you and I celebrate you greatly. Turn to another person and say, I honor you. I know you fought in the morning, but say it. I honor you. Hallelujah. Never trivialize greatness, no matter how little it is. Never trivialize greatness. Never trivialize greatness. They invite you to go and preach. And you know that this is a church that you never who dash monkey banana. It, it never is just favor. Don't pretend as though we have been ministering in this kind of churches. Uh -uh. Celebrate the gift. Celebrate the grace. Do what God has called you to do. God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Never come into the presence of greatness empty handed. I'm teaching you one powerful law of honor. Please, look, I can, I can get down on my knees and beg you. If you want extraordinary success, never make it a culture. Do it delightsomely. Do not cultivate the attitude of coming into the presence of a great man empty-handed. If you do not have a seed, look for opportunities to serve. Are you getting what I'm saying? I never see a man of God empty-handed. No matter what happens. And I'm not talking about this kind of ridiculous seed that was talked about in Malachi chapter 1. That people can't... No, no. You don't bless a great man with leftovers. You bless a great man honorably. I'm teaching you principles that make for great men. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. Father, I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. I never go to see my father or my mother empty-handed. Never. 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 It's, it's a taboo as far as I'm concerned. Never. I never go to greet and see an elderly person. If, if, even if I don't take a gift, then it means I'm going to send something. But many of us we do not understand that these are little principles. This is how the kingdom is built. You neglect it at your detriment. I'm rounding up. There are two ways I taught you to receive from a great man. One is service and the other is seed. If you don't have money, go and look for the man of God's clothes. Say, Sam, just early in the morning, just say, Sam, I came to your house. Where are your clothes? Sam will say, no, say, kill me here bring it out and you carry a bucket and you are washing Hebrews 7 7 and without contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater you see a woman you go to her house and say mommy I came to wash your plates today say no no my daughter there are no plates carry the ones that are clean say they are dusty soak them again Lord this is how I will have my home this is how I will be blessed the law of honor you can tap into anointings and leave the realm that you are now hallelujah praise the lord jesus now let me say something 
because I know that there are people who are ministers here and there are many who will be listening. Please listen to this. Never invite a man of God, whether a music minister, a worship minister, for a meeting without intentionally planning to honor him. You see, a lot of people do this in the body of Christ. Let me correct it now. Hallelujah. This is an apostolic ministry. We speak to the body of Christ. And I'm speaking to the body of Christ. It must be corrected. Never invite a man of God that you do not have capacity to bless his grace or his gift. Are you getting my point? There are many people who want to bring every great man of God, but they are not prepared. If I am going to bring this man as a professional decorator, for instance, I must have the ability to honor his grace. If I cannot, use what you have. Please, is somebody getting blessed? There are so many people, I want to invite this, I want to invite that. There are so many men of God that have been pained because people just invite them, come for a meeting, and they never make adequate arrangement. There are laws and principles in this ministry. There are very few men of God who have invited here. And I can tell you this with all humility. When we invite a man of God, we, we prepare as if it's marriage. Because if we think that grace is not enough to bless us, then we better not invite him. Are you getting my point? When we invite a man of God right from the junction, the protocol department is waiting for him. When he gets there, they pick him. There are people who invite a man of God and it's when he comes, you go and you keep him standing and you are paying for his hotel room. He says, sorry, how much is this room? Is it double or single, standard or this thing? And the man is, you have been planning for a meeting for a long time. Are you getting my point? Now Pastor Williams is just standing. And you are wondering, or a man of God that you invite, you say, has he come? He's outside, you just say, sorry, please stand up, stand up. Keep these two seats. Sir, you are welcome. What are you doing? You are not intentional about the spirit of excellence. And now I know that many people have not been trained to recognize this. But I want you to know, you will never receive maximally from an anointing that you do not honor. I have found myself teaching and pouring myself in meetings because of the way that I was honored. They honored me from my arrival to my departure. And I found out that there was an unusual flow of grace. I, I went the extra mile to have maybe meetings with leaders or people like that because of honor. But there are meetings you go for, you can't wait for the last session. Immediately it finishes, you just, you just everybody, pack your load and let's leave this place. Never make your ministry like that. There are four things that you must look at when you are inviting a man of God. Let me use the opportunity and say this. Number one, his hospitality. Hospitality. Especially when you are, it's okay if you are inviting a man of God that is within your region. Please say it because this has not been taught in the body of Christ. Number one, hospitality. Never carry a man of God and come and frustrate him in a place because you think you are invited. No, don't do that. Hospitality. Hallelujah. Prepare very well. Let the man of God eat well. If he's fasting, ask him, don't assume. Don't say, bring only dinner. I already know this guy. He's always fasting. What if he's not fasting that day? Number two, prepare to celebrate his grace publicly. Hallelujah. Prepare to celebrate his grace. I'm teaching you how to receive graces. There are places I've gone for once, it will take God instructing me to go there again. When God speaks, then I go particularly just because I'm obeying the voice of God. Otherwise, I will never go there out of personal comfort again. No, no. Number three, let there be the spirit of excellence in your organization. Excellence does not have to mean that you are expensive. Excellence just means the highest level of order. Let there be the highest level of order. And then number four, honor the man. As much as possible, let there be an honorarium. Honorarium simply means that a gift or whatever means of appreciating and celebrating his grace. Just like teachers, you can never really reward mentors and men of God and great men. 
make sure you never bring a man of God. I remember one of my friends who went to preach somewhere. They had been disturbing this guy. And when he went to preach, I'm being sincere with you. <laughs> Immediately he finished. They, you know this kind of, this kind of, um, this wire papers. They just squeeze 500 naira, roll, roll it as if it's bribe. And just say, May we thank you for your grace. Ah, bah. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. Now imagine that that man of God has a wife. Are you getting my point? And now this man left his wife for three days. This is his job. This is where God blesses him. And he comes back after three days. Right? And she's happy. She welcomes him. And the man said, we came back from the vineyard of the Lord. We have done exploits for the kingdom. Blind eyes were open. You know, sick bodies. And then they just bring this PTA. You know this PTA letter of primary school. Where they, they will leave dash and they put their mouth and say honey just to remind you that uh, junior is going to school day after tomorrow and the man of god becomes angry he's frowning at everybody in the house because he is saving the, the sinners but his family is dying never bring a man of god that you are not your capacity don't say i can bring anybody let me tell you the mistake there are many people who try to bring men of god and they overlook these things and when it happens it's like it endorses their error and so they say look even so 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 and so person we have brought him talk more of you you don't know the inconvenience that person went through and he just did it for the sake of the gospel by the grace of god if you see us invite anybody in this house i can tell you at the level of exposure and excellence and finance and blessing that god has given us we will honor and make sure that this man is blessed Bless enough that if we call him tomorrow, he'll say, thank you. I'm coming. Everybody say the law of honor. Any anointing that you do not honor, you will never receive anything from. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the breakthrough or the key to your next level is hidden in an anointing that may not be so far from you from scripture our breakthrough is always closer to us than we can ever imagine the problem is we keep looking far that breakthrough may be your mother in the same house you've gone to every man of god and every prophet and every herbalist but your mother who has that anointing to set you free there are people who again and again they probably have not been healed because they have not honored what God is doing in this house. Let me finish this. I wrote something down. Every good gift. The word gift there. Please leave that scripture up. Let me just explain something. The word gift there. Is the word dosis. And it means the act of giving. And every perfect gift. Is the word dorema. Which means the thing given. So it talks about both the thing giving and the act of giving. Are we together now? Then it says, it's from above and all of that. Now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone. But the very act of communicating things from God to men is called grace. Are you getting my point now? So that grace is not just a thing you collect. The very act of communicating with God is called grace now I define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by God comma I'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by God but only in and through Christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by God but only in and through Christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things 
are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access <clears throat> grace is access definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um, were captured in the Judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to Moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement so works equal obedience to the believer today Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what I call works. Your partnership.
towards making promises manifest is what we call works we need to define this because i'm going to be playing around with these words and um it's important that all of us when you hear it you know what i'm saying number what now let's hurry up i will rush now number six excellence let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the holy spirit advantageous connections number nine knowledge what is knowledge thank you jesus what is knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information the gathering or acquisition of information or facts that's called knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness or familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the tenth terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is comprehension eleven wisdom we're almost there eleven wisdom
correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge write it down wisdom is the correct application of knowledge also refers to the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied accurately and correctly it's called wisdom distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us do you know what do you know what i'm imagining i'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say apostle thank you thank you thank you no no look you will be too blessed to do it even if you don't like me you will do it you will turn back one day i'll come to your house and when others are languishing i will see you together with your children giving god praise and say today is a day off we are just worshiping and blessing his name and people will say are you in nigeria you say no i i am only here but we, we 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 sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order Remember I used to say this thing years ago. Believe it oh. Believe it. I imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying, Mama, I know you did not make it in this life, but I have a surprise. Cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say, Mama, the car you did not drive, this is it. Let the devil do anything he would do. Do you think your mother will be happy? You are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members clothes because of rent. I must kill you now. How much? 250,000. That's all right. That's all right. In two minutes is there. God bless you. Not alone. I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching. And say, this is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12. Prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper. Two more definitions and we're there. Number 13. Goals. G-O-A-L-S Goals What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. 14 the last word value v-a-l-u-e value what is the definition of value write it down point of difference what is the definition of value point of difference another definition your uniqueness another definition your skill so what is value your point of difference your uniqueness your skill write this down under value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value i repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying God 
is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying god is called value take a deep breath you have tried you have been writing some of you that's a key to drive laziness you've not done this in a long time I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight I gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain listen I gave you 14 definitions that will make your church your ministry your group excel or fail I gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become write this down success is predictable I don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful success is predictable now I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed there are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail. It's a very sad truth. They will be offended and they will think he's proud. Are you God? And then you see that you really fail. Failure is also predictable. Write it down. So success is predictable. Semicolon. Failure is also predictable. I can look at your life, brothers and sisters. And I can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior. You are going to be a very great word addict. But I know that as far as success is concerned, you may not be very successful. I can look at your life and I know that you are going to be a very rich man. You will buy the jets and the Rolls Royces. But you will never be a spiritual man. I can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances but marriage you will pay a deep price i can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband but a very poor and broke man i can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came You know years ago as i began to pursue the things of the spirit i stumbled across materials that taught on this i folded them with speed and threw them one side I felt, look let me press on this how foolish i was imagine that i came for koinonia now and after preaching a powerful message i now tell you all of you you are going to sow my mind is not stable I'm, i need i need you have to pay my rent i'm blessing you the Bible says A and B and C. Everybody stand up. Worship team, you are bringing 50,000. Prayer band, you are bringing 1 million. <laughs> Benga, <laughs> you are not praying for nothing. 1 million. Leaders, you are bringing 2 million. Oh, what a cost way of leadership. You will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way. God did not send me to be a nuisance to you. He sent me to bless you. 
Yes. It will never happen in this ministry where I will say, please, raise offering for me so that I can eat well. No. You know what we call escape velocity in physics? Where you have gone past certain things. It's not pride. It will never happen again till Jesus comes. I found my way to better days. I found my way to better days. For many of you tonight, you're on your way to better days. Let them laugh at you. You're on your way to better days. Status is Prophesy to yourself. There's no more I'm on my way to I'm on my way. 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 for one minute and say Lord I am truly changing I'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain there is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place there is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact, a life of dignity, a life of beauty, a life of peace, a life of glory. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Our time is gone. Let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Now we've had all the peripherals. Please listen, I want to teach you. You just sang that you are on your way to better days. For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents. For some of you, is that you were thrown outside. For some of you, is that you had admission but there was no money to pay it. For some of you, is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise 10,000 and bring back home to eat. For some of you, is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success. For some of you, there are men of God probably listening to me. You have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection listen if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things when i look at people who say god forbid over my dead body i will never do this and that i tell them keep quiet you don't know the pressure that failure forces people Pressure can make you do things you never imagined you would do. I've shared with you here, I think it's in Koinonia. Years ago when I counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand its success. Her mother, true story, her mother was working with a boss and the father I think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded. I, I don't know if it was whatever it is, but it was a very serious issue. And the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family. Being the chief burden bearer, which is very wrong of the entire family. And according to what the lady told me, she said the boss looked at her own mother and said, you are not a, a small girl. You know what to do. 
if you want to raise someone's mother matured lady you know what to do and the mother initially refused but when she went to meet the father the situation the pressure was overwhelming both of them agreed that the mother should go and sleep with the man now yeah, i know you are, we have we can shout in church ah, i won't do it don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot when somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night he never planned it that's what pressure me. when the girl told me that thing, do you know what happened do you know that after the man paid that woman her money the shame she had to still quit the job and leave when the lady told me i said oh god what is this we are here jumping in church saying since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken that is such a lie i've seen many righteous people forsaken you know? i've seen many of their seed beg for bread we sing it by faith and i believe it but i have seen many righteous people such as our parents such as your brother and your sister you know them they love god they have been dejected and forsaken they forsook loves and good things left them success is predictable failure is predictable you can make up your mind from today that you're going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success you can make up your mind today that you're going to begin in in a way and a dimension that you have never seen to obey these laws and excel let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight ready the laws of success thank you jesus ready the first law of success the law of relationships write it down the law of relationships ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm everybody say the law of relationships shout it the law of write this down success is highly relationship dependent Success is highly relationship dependent. Your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent. Number two, everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Write it down. Everything, I don't care what it is, anything at all that money can buy, relationship can pay for it money can buy a house relationships can buy a house money can help you build a church relationship can help you build a church listen money as you know naira and cobble dollars pounds yen these things are not the only means of exchange relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things there are many ignorant people who want to be successful but they do not know the law of relationships so they have to look for money to pay for everything you ask them and they tell you i need five million i need ten million whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value and it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for there are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and it entered free are we together now there are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent there are people who have had to pay for everything in life listen if you use money to buy everything in life you are not wise no. 
it is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life it has nothing to do with being rich that's the mistake our parents made I love our parents don't get me wrong some of you here are parents we love you we honor you with all our hearts most people think you only succeed when you start having salary hundred thousand coming and they now say wow I have hundred thousand then they have a need they ignore relationships and something that would be cheaply paid for they would have to look for money and pay for it I have paid for many things in my life using relationship relationship like a debit card you can use it and withdraw many other things you can use it and pay for many other things relationships today by the grace of God has given me platforms I am connected to people listen connectivity is a key to success you must be connected relationships can help you access anointings relationships can help you access endorsements relationships can help you access favor 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 the major ingredient in success is favor but it takes relationships We have come with open arms, oh let the ancient words. Hallelujah. There are things in my life I would have paid for financially. Let me give you an example. This great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC. We have never paid a single couple for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has paid for. Yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent. Unfortunately, for many of us, all we know is just love relationship. Husband and wife, somebody who likes a lady, a lady likes him back. That, that's only an aspect of it. Your relationship with God is a key to your success. Correct? You excel in life on the strength of your relationship with God. The healthier your relationship with God, the healthier your relationship with the Spirit of God, the greater your success. The prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father. And on the strength of his relationship with his father, he did not pay for food. He did not pay for protection. But here's what he said. I don't want relationship. I rather want money. And he ended relationship and got money. What happened to the money? Without relationships, your finances will always be finite. There is only so much. Relationship is the secret of continual financial flow. Relationship is the secret. It is relationship that will keep finances i'm not talking about finances necessarily but i'm just using it as a case study relationships people have blessed me today purely based on relationships not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of god just to bless do you know that somebody in zaria today has the heart to bless you but you do not have the connection are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying. Somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship. During my birthday, people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes. I 
I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest. The leaders did something touching. Different people did things, but there were certain strategic blessings and things they were done. And I said, God, what is this? What is this? Relationships. Relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you to enter there many of us have been trivializing relationships that's why we keep hustling the bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them he does not know the road to the city by the grace of god i understand the ministry of destiny helpers the ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship god has used me as a destiny helper to many god has used many people as destiny helpers to me hallelujah cheap victories that many of us lose cheap victories some of our parents do not know anybody and so you pay for everything and when you want to use money alone to be successful a day will come you will have all the money in your life and you'll find out that there are some things money cannot do are we together there are people you know one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that i've learned from my father my father is a man who was wealthy in relationships i used to think he was just you know you know just someone who just likes people but now that i've grown i have seen the wisdom relationship paid many bills for my father relationships let me tell you something relationship is an investment the same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship all this something for nothing is, is a joke there are many of us we have this self flattery they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text message as if you die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but he's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day a need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly he said are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy hey, Jimmy is my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank 
these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one old day. Ah, promise where are you I'm, I'm trusting God for what come 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 there's create one committee that doesn't make sense I say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when God helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask Mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what I'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one trouser two hundred naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people oh, there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible 
somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say i prayed and god led me to come and submit my cv he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and i say this sincerely this is one secret that muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course i i, I love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, don't, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles of god Are we together? There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. There is no day. I say it, may God forgive me if I'm lying, but it's true. There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. You cook by yourself. You wash your clothes by yourself. You intercede for yourself. No relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you're looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself 
humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age you were not thinking like them that means most likely they will be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now 
but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since i paid for the palace when i could afford it i show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness so you can see somebody in the future come you see somebody in the future no charisma no anointing yet favor will never stop leaving him everybody knows him we're about leaving be that today and a man of god who also came for administration the man of god came for administration i was about to enter the car let's go and then um the protocol stopped me and said please i need to attend to him i turned to him and i said hello sir i don't know you he said sir you don't need to know me i came for administration and i had you were around i stopped the guy was holding a seat in his hand say relationships there are people who will be talking who should we lift here and somebody will say please i have one daughter I have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this course but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray I will stop here no one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me billy graham we talk about billy graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time billy graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the united states wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody's pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've heard my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilets of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it pained me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to u.s to go and scrub toilet if can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is the lord's doing 
most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere cut them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i like you to thank god for this message we just started introducing it tonight lift your hands and thank god open your mouth and say god thank you you are revealing to me the keys 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 hallelujah let me tell you something come big guy many of you don't know this gentleman you see this guy this guy would never fail in life ask me why because when we started listen carefully when he and i started the time we used to meet in the campus and sit on his slab and this gentleman the same way he's holding his guitar that's how he, he was a person who was holding the guitar and playing and he will everybody usually will be seated when it's time to preach but you have to stand with me there's another dear lady she was the one who would hold light for me that's her work she did it joyfully bring her touch light every time i was going to read a scripture she would do it joyfully those two people will never never beg for bread not when i'm alive yes no 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 it's not amen this is a reality i'm serious about it i can mention names of people i told you about my principal who i went to visit early this year and i looked at him he had become an old man now and i said god in my lifetime please let me build a house for this man and buy a car for him and bless him with a seed that brings tears from his eyes before he goes to me it's a covenant i made with myself what did he do he believed in me i remember seeing me as a young boy and he looked at me and said you are smart he had a little keyboard and he called me to come and sit down and i had come from a background of so much complex and pain he made the entire school to gather in front of me and he said i should play keyboard for them and that was the beginning of the healing process for inferiority that today nations are getting blessed from i was not born this way never forget those who believed in you when you were nothing you see let me tell you something about greatness as you start rising levels will change don't let your mind change because you will start seeing psychophants people who you meet on the journey and they are there to make it look like at your level should you now be relating with these ones this woman used to sweep your house now you have become a big woman you are even going to marry a millionaire just find two thousand and let her go away please this smelly woman not your class a wise person will say if she could sweep my house when i had nothing she deserves to sweep my palace she even deserves a palace of her own relationships 
anything money can buy, relationship can buy it. You have been paying for too many things using finances. Start using relationships. Lift your voice and cry. Because God bless you. I love you. Baby. Lift your voice and say, Lord, connect me. Connect me. Connect me. Pray. Connect me. Shato Salaka de Bregadia. Shepherdo Salabakaria. I know our time is gone, but pray. I'm handing to you keys that will make your life remarkable. Man of God, pray for relationships. Strategic relationships. Covenant relationships. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take away the spirit of offense because offense is the killer of relationships. Hear me? Your friends will never be perfect people, just like you are not. There are many of you, your, your son, you can never have a friend for two weeks and not talk about A to B and talk about B to C. It's a devilish attitude. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take that attitude out of my life. Bitterness on offense. Grace to forbear. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my destiny friend. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my valuable friends. Listen, Pastor Femi, come. Many of you don't know why you see me stand with Pastor Femi. It's not just because Pastor Femi is my son in the gospel. Let me tell you. Do you know before he became a pastor, Pastor Femi used to be the one to carry equipment for washing team. This washing team you see. He was, he would carry the equipment and sit down in Rema Chapel. They would finish rehearsal. He would help to close and God was watching. God was watching. Foolish people were saying you are wasting time. Why are you human worship? And God was watching. God does not lift proud people. God lifts those who can serve with their heart and their life. Gradually, gradually, occasionally he would play bass guitar. Humble himself. Even when he became a pastor, there were times he was playing bass guitar. One day I had to tell him, no, it's okay. The person assisting him now, Francis. Francis is a friend of Charles. Francis was in protocol. Look at how God is lifting people except you. God is lifting people except you because pride has still kept you where you are. Big money sin. There are people who humble themselves to serve. There are people in this ministry. The level of grace they have, they can be geos of great ministries. Yet you see them doing very frail activities. Some of them are in protocol, running around. He resisted the proud. He gives grace to the humble. You see what God has done in his life today. God bless you. Aaron, come. Let me use you. Come, Aaron. Many of you do not know that the first person who was the protocol of UNI was Aaron. This gentleman you see standing here. When we were doing crusades, nothing to write home about. Owing everybody everywhere. Just moving by faith. It was Aaron who was in charge of logistics and buses. I remember shouting at them and pushing them and all of these things. This guy you see, Aaron. Yet till today, the way he is, you still see him greet some of the leaders. Some of these people are young. They are younger than him by far in age, younger than him in experience and all of that. And you see him still act and where there is an opportunity, you see him serve with all his heart. Aaron is one person who has served me and served God with his life. 
and I made a vow and a covenant, no matter what happens, I will never watch him and his children beg for bread. Thank you, my Lord. Question. A few years from now, who is going to call you? Do you know a Jimmy's wife, this lady you see, as of 2010, she was a member of protocol. Protocol, when we're doing Kingdom Well Summit. Had not married her husband yet. Protocol. Serving with all her heart. Establishing quality relationships. Today, look at their children. All copying what the parents are doing. You are allowing time to pass. God is sending strategic people to your life. You insult everybody who is not you. You are out to look for imperfections. This lady is too loud. This person is too this. It is true they have those issues. But can you ignore it and see that God is connecting you with a ladder that will wipe your tears forever? Our parents ignored it. And today they keep frowning at televisions when they see their colleagues. Pray one minute. Open my eyes to see those who are my destiny helpers. Open my eyes to see the relationship I must protect at all costs. Open my eyes, oh God, to see the relationship. Not all relationships are worth keeping. Not all relationships are worth protecting. But I tell you, there are relationships that are worth keeping forever. relationships you must protect at all costs. Some of us are penny wise and pound foolish. We can destroy today or try to enjoy today. We destroy a relationship that is long lasting. I have seen people, I have counseled people who destroyed relationship with great people over trivial matters. Matters of marriage, matters of money, matters of job, matters of reputation. Matters of ego broke great relationships with people. I know great men today who have vowed in my presence that they will never help certain people because of their attitude. Last prayer Father, give me the grace to be friendable, give me the grace to be relatable. May my life not drive people away, may my words not drive people away. May my attitude not drive people away. May my sense of resentment against people not drive them away. Pray. Success system. Success system. The mysteries that have been responsible for your common life, your common needs that is in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Look up. We're rounding up now. Some of you need to call your parents tomorrow and restore your relationship. Some of you need to call your siblings and restore your relationship. Some of you need to call maybe some people in your department. Even as workers in this house. Some of you need to say, look, I'm tired of this. I can't be fighting everybody. Master the art of celebrating people. That's one of the keys of relationship. 
master the art of lavishly and truly celebrating people. Ah, Marcelina, you have a lovely voice. Amaka, you have a lovely voice. Ah, MD, you are playing well. Don't just say what is special. You see, the moment you trivialize people's worth, they run away from you. That's why you never see me talk about any man of God and try to show that I am higher. No, 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 no. You hardly even see me call any of this my people, my son, my this. It's still a heaviness in my spirit. Don't resent people to show you are higher. No. Celebrate people. Our children come here after service. You see me hug them and appreciate them with all my heart. You come here whether I know you or not. I'm shaking you, I'm greeting you, I'm hugging you. After service, I tell you, hug one another. Some of you just pull your mouth and you are going straight to the boss. Don't do that. Don't do that. You, are, you can add 10 years of pain to your life by ignoring one person. Father, I pray for your people tonight in the name of Jesus. You are revealing to us success systems that will bring us into uncommon dimensions of triumph. I pray, oh God, that every spirit of bitterness that is in anyone here that is responsible for driving valuable people, may that spirit live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that God will give you the unashamedness to invest in profitable relationships. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will have at least two to three valuable people in your life that you can call friends in me. And I declare and declare that every wrong attitude that you have portrayed that has driven great people from your life, I declare a restoration for you tonight. In the name of Jesus, I command a reconnection for you with the great and valuable people who will lift you to the next level. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Put your hands together for Jesus and please keep standing. Please keep standing. Please keep standing. Our time is gone, but I just want to perform two functions very quickly. Number one, I want to make an altar call. Why do we do this every time? We do this because there is somebody who needs to have a relationship with Jesus. We are talking about the law of relationships. There are some of you outside. The first relationship you need a connection with and two is Jesus Christ. You will never succeed in life outside of him. You may have been coming around. Some of you are outside. Some of you are online. Some of you were invited. You heard me speak. You are hearing me speak again. And the Lord is telling you, I need a relationship with you. I want to build your life. Some of you need a reconnection. That connectivity has been broken. Wherever you are, please, I will count one to four very quickly. Don't wait for anybody to come. Take a bold step and make your way out here right now. One, quickly. Please appreciate them as they come. I believe there are people here and there. If you are coming, please come. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Please run and come. Two, I'm counting one to four. God bless you. God bless you. You can stand on your feet, please. Those outside, keep coming. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's a reconnection. Man of God, I need this relationship. I don't want my life to be a failure. He said, he who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Keep coming. Three. God bless you. Don't be ashamed of him. He's the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your courage. If you're coming, still join them quickly. Quickly, I see people coming. Our mother is coming. God bless you, Mama. Please come and join them quickly. Let's appreciate our mother. God bless you. Bless you. Now, I want you to lift your right hand, all of you in front. Lift your right hand and mean it seriously. We're out of time, but then don't make a joke of it. It's a supernatural experience. Say in the name of Jesus, tonight, I declare that my heart belongs to Jesus. I surrender to you totally, completely. I ask that my sins be forgiven. See, the power of God is even on you as you are praying. I receive the life of God right now. And I declare that I'm a child of God from today 
my sins are forgiven. I have a new beginning. I declare that I'm reconnected back to the source of my life, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Father, receive these ones. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will take them from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you honor their decisions and I pray, oh God, that this will be forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much for coming. There's a gentleman waving his hands. All of you are likely to just move in concert and you will meet him. They will direct you, give you a few details and communicate a few things. Let's honor them very quickly. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.